Southampton. Table of Contents, Southampton. Dr. Sidney Socloff. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2023. Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloff. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Cole Tove. For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to tiny.1/ytnavigator. Southampton is a very busy cruise port with thousands of cruise passengers each year. Most pass through the city on their way to the cruise ships to begin a cruise or at the end of a cruise without stopping. Boweva. Southampton is well worth a visit and offers many attractions. This is especially true for cruise ship passengers who have come to the UK after a long transatlantic flight. It is well worth arriving a day or more before the cruise just to rest up and get some adjustment to the effects of jet lag. Many who are indeed wise or fortunate enough to arrive a day or more early stay in London. As an alternative to the high cost and congestion of London, a more relaxing and much less expensive stay in Southampton should be considered. As we shall show, Southampton has many attractions both from a historical as well as a cultural standpoint. A stay in Southampton of a day or more before or even after a cruise is a possibility that should be considered. Also, Southampton can serve as a base for day trips along the south coast of England and has good train coach and highway links to many nearby points of interest. Southampton is the largest city in the county of Hampshire, on the south coast of England. This is the Southampton region, showing the location of the Southampton Airport. These are some of the major roads in the Southampton region. This is the Southampton metropolitan area. This is the area along the south coast of England near Southampton. This is the county of Hampshire, with the principal cities of Southampton, Portsmouth, and Winchester. Between Southampton and the English Channel is the Isle of Wight. Southampton is around 60 miles or 100 kilometers southwest of London and 15 miles, or 20 kilometers west of Portsmouth. Southampton is a major port with the Southampton Water and the Solent leading to the English Channel. Just to the west of Southampton is the New Forest, and to the north is the Cathedral City of Winchester. The presence of the Isle of Wight to the south of the Solent results in a double tide, with two distinct high tide peaks. This gives the port a much longer high tide period than of the ports, making the movement of large ships easier. Southampton is at the northernmost point of Southampton Water, at the confluence of the River Test and River Itchen. The city centre is located on the peninsula between the two rivers. Significant employers in Southampton include the University of Southampton, the Ford Transit Factory, Ordnance Survey, BBC Radio Solent, the NHS, and it is one of the largest commercial ports in Europe. The city represents the core of the greater Southampton region and the town itself has an estimated population of 254,000. The geography of Southampton is very much influenced by the sea and rivers. The city lies at the northern tip of the Southampton Water, a deep water estuary, formed at the end of the last ice age, where the rivers test and itch and converge. The Riva Test is a salt marsh that makes it ideal for salmon fishing. It runs along the western edge of the city, 
while the Itchen splits Southampton in two, east and west. The city's name is sometimes abbreviated in writing to Sutton or Sutton, and a resident of Southampton is called a Suttonian. Southampton has been a settlement since Roman and Saxon times in Roman times. The town was known as Clausentum. The Roman ruins are situated in a suburb called Bittern Manor. Hey, are the cities in the region with their Roman names? And the counties of South East England? Sussex is actually now divided into two counties. East Sussex and West Sussex. Southampton was devastated by bombing during the Second World War. Meaning that much of the city and its heritage were destroyed. As a result, the city and its architecture have quite a modern feel to them. Southampton has grown rapidly in the past 30 years, becoming one of the 20 largest cities in England. The two universities, Solent University and the University of Southampton, mean there is a large student population. Southampton in addition to Plymouth, was one of the ports of departure for the pilgrims bound for America aboard the Mayflower in 1620. Southampton is noted for being the home of the RMS Titanic, the Spitfire fighter plane of World War II, and more recently a number of the largest cruise ships in the world. This is the RMS Titanic departing Southampton in 1912. In 1912 the RMS Titanic sailed from Southampton. Many of the crew on board the vessel were Setonians, with about a third of those who perished in the tragedy being from Southampton. There is a memorial in Southampton to the engineers of the RMS Titanic. Along with white still lines, Southampton was the home port for the transatlantic passenger services operated by Cunard with a blue riband line RMS Queen Mary. And her sister ship, the RMS Queen Elizabeth. Southampton has always been a maritime center, and the docks have long been a major employer in the city in particular. It is a port for cruise ships. Its heyday was the first half of the 20th century and in particular the interwar years, when it handled almost half the passenger traffic of the UK. Today Southampton remains home to luxury cruise ships, as well as being the largest freight port on the Channel Coast and fourth largest UK port by tonnage, with several container terminals. Southampton Container Terminals first opened in 1968, and has continued to expand. Southampton was a major center for airplane production during World War II. The Supermarine Spitfire was designed and developed in Southampton, evolving from the Schneider Trophy-winning seaplanes of the 1920s and 1930s. Heavy bombing of the Spitfire factory in September 1940 destroyed it, as well as homes in the vicinity, killing civilians and workers. The Supermarine Spitfire is a British single-seat fighter aircraft used by the Royal Air Force and many other Allied countries through the Second World War and on into the 1950s as a frontline fighter and in secondary roles. It was produced in greater numbers than any other Allied design. The Spitfire was the only Allied fighter in production throughout the Second World War. World War II hit Southampton particularly hard because of its strategic importance as a major commercial port and industrial area. Prior to the invasion of Europe, components for Mulberry Harbor were built here. After D-Day, Southampton docks handled military cargo to help keep the Allied forces supplied, making it a key target of Luftwaffe bombing raids until late 1944. In Saxon times, Southampton became walled in the medieval era. Southampton was known as Hamwick. Its position on England's south coast made it Britain's premier trading post. And some remnants of these defenses remain throughout the city. 
most notably the bar gate in the middle of the city Sinte. Pockets of Georgian architect who survived the war. But much of the city was leveled. There has been extensive redevelopment since World War II. Here is the Southampton city Sinte with the bar gate and the modern West Key shopping Sinte. Increasing traffic congestion in the 1920s led to partial demolition of medieval walls around the Bargate in 1932 and 1938. However, a large portion of those walls remains standing today, leaving Southampton with one of the longest surviving remnants of medieval walls in the country. Much of the waterfront has been reclaimed over the years, mainly for use as the western docks. Most of the land used for reclamation came from the dredging of Southampton water to ensure that the port could continue handling some of the world's largest ships. Southampton has a range of cultures and ethnic groups, which make up the estimated 254,000 people living within the city boundary. There is a large Polish population in the city, with estimates as high as 20,000, or one in every 11 of the total population, as well as large Asian and Irish communities. Unlike some other ports, such as Liverpool, London, and Bristol, where industry and docks have largely moved out of the city centres leaving room for redevelopment, Southampton retains much of its inner city industry. Part of the docks has been redeveloped. However, as the Ocean Village development, a local marina and entertainment complex, the largest theater in the city is the 2300 capacity Mayflower Theater, which hosts a number of West End shows. There is also the Nuffield Theater at the University of Southampton a venue for many local performing societies. Here is the location of the Mayflower Theater and the Ocean Village Complex. The city is deeply connected to the Cunard Line and its fleet of ships. The only passenger vessels to be registered in this city, and thus where the name Southampton on the stern. Southampton's largest retail center is the Westway Shopping Center. Opened in September 2000 and hosting major high street brands. It is one of the largest in the country. The Westway Shopping Center is very close to the Bargate in the center of the city. You can follow the sign posted original course of the historic town walls, gatehouses and towers, which are amongst the most complete in England. Around half of the original one-mile circuit still survives, including the famous Bargate. The Museum of Archaeology is home to one of the most outstanding archaeology collections in England. It traces the history of the city from its origins as a Roman town to the age of the empire under Victoria. The building, God's House Tower, is in itself noteworthy as the first purpose-built artillery fortification in England. The medieval merchant's house is one of the earliest surviving merchant's houses in England. It has been restored to its mid-14th century appearance, and replica furnishings provide an insight into medieval life. The Tudor House Museum and Garden was built in 1495 for Sir John Daughtry, the controller of customs in Southampton. The Hall of Aviation Museum, called Solent Sky, is located near Ocean Village. This museum is dedicated to telling the story of aviation in the Solent area. Here are some of the points of interest in Southampton. The Sea City Museum tells the story of the people of the city, their fascinating lives, and historic connections with the Titanic and the sea. The Sea City Museum brings maritime history to life through an interactive experience designed for all ages. The Sea City Museum opened in April 2012 to mark the centenary of the RMS Titanic's departure from the city. The museum contains two permanent exhibitions. One dedicated to Southampton's connection with RMS Titanic, 
and the effect to the city's role as a gateway to the world. Here is the location of the Sea City Museum. Also shown here is the Bargate with High Street to the south, and above Bar Street to the north. Southampton can be used as a base for day trips to points of interest in the area. These include Winchester to the north, Portsmouth to the east, the Isle of Wight to the south, and the New Forest to the west. These are all within an easy one or two hour train ride from the Southampton Central Station. Southampton can be used as a base for day trip to points of interest in the area. There are sites well worth seeing to the east, west, north, and south of Southampton. These include Winchester to the north, Portsmouth to the east, the Isle of Wight to the south, and the New Forest to the west. These are all within an easy one or two who train ride from the Southampton Central Station. This is the region around Southampton. The Southampton Central train station is close to the center of the city and within easy walking distance of many of the major hotels. This is the location of the Southampton Central train station. A few blocks away from the train station is the Southampton Central coach station, which can also be used for day trips as well as transportation to and from Heathrow and Gatwick airports. The historic city of Winchester is only a 45-minute train ride from the central train station of Southampton. Winchester with a population of 122,000 is a historic city and former capital city of England. Winchester's major landmark is Winchester Cathedral, one of the largest cathedrals in Europe. The Winchester Cathedral has the distinction of having the longest nave and overall length of all the Gothic cathedrals in Europe. Occupying a prominent place in the center of Winchester is the statue of King Arthur. King Alfred the Great named Winchester as the capital, first of his kingdom of Wessex, and later of all England south of the Danelaw. Despite the growing importance of London, it remained the capital city until the Norman invasion of 1066. Winchester is well known for the great hall of its castle, which was built in the 12th century. The Great Hall was rebuilt sometime between 1222 and 1235 and still exists in this form. It is famous for King Arthur's Round Table, which has hung in the hall since at least 1463. King Arthur's Round Table actually dates from the 13th century, and as such is not contemporary to Arthur. Despite this, it is still of considerable historical interest and attracts many tourists. The table was originally unpainted, but was painted for King Henry VIII in 1522. The names of the legendary knights of the round table are written around the edge of the table surmounted by King Arthur on his throne. Portsmouth with its historic naval yard is only a one-train ride from Southampton. The Portsmouth Historic Dockyard features the brand new Mary Rose Museum and world-famous ships HMS Victory and HMS Warrior, 1860. With 800 years of history on display, including the National Museum of the Royal Navy, action stations and harbor tour, there is much to see and do for an entire day. The Portsmouth Historic Dockyard is just a very short walk from the Portsmouth Harbour train station and only an who's train ride from Southampton. The dockyard is situated within a major working Royal Navy base and is the only place in the world to see the Royal Navy's past, present and future. The Mary Rose was a warship of the English to do Navy of King Henry VIII. After serving for 33 years in several wars against France, Scotland, and Brittany and being substantially rebuilt in 1536, 
She saw Hellesque action in 1545. While leading the attack on the galleys of a French invasion fleet, the Mary Rose capsized and sank in the Solent near Portsmouth. The wreck of the Mary Rose was rediscovered in 1971 and was salvaged in 1982 in one of the most complex and expensive projects in the history of maritime archaeology. It is now undergoing extensive restoration and preservation in the new Mary Rose Museum in the Portsmouth Historic Dockyard. The HMS Victory is a 104-gun first-rate ship of the line of the Royal Navy. It was laid down in 1759 and launched in 1765. She is most famous as Lord Nelson's flagship at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. In 1922, the HMS Victory was moved to a dry dock at Portsmouth and preserved as a museum ship. She is the flagship of the First Sea Lord and is the oldest naval ship still in commission. It is highly recommended to tour the HMS Victory, both above and below decks. The HMS Warrior was built for the Royal Navy from 1859 to 1861, and was the first armor-plated, iron-hulled warship. She marked a revolution in the building of warships, and has been a museum ship in Portsmouth since 1987. This ship is open for tours. The Isle of Wight offers many attractions, both natural as well as historic. The Isle of Wight can be reached from Southampton by a frequent ferry connection to east and west coast on the island. The Red Funnel Car Ferry Service from Southampton and East Coast operates every 60 minutes during the day for most of the year. The crossing time is approximately one hour. There is also the Red Funnel's Red Jet High Speed Ferry Service between Southampton and West Coast with sailings every 30 minutes at peak times including Saturdays, and every 60 minutes at off-peak times. This is for foot passengers only, and the crossing takes under 25 minutes at speeds up to 40 knots. This shows the location of the Red Funnel Car Ferry, and the Reed Jet Service from Southampton to Coes on the Isle of Wight. A convenient way to get to the ferry terminals and other places in town is the free and very frequent, about every 15 minutes, CityLink bus service. This runs between the central train station and the town key terminals, with stops near the coach station, ISDA, and the West Key Shopping Center. This again shows the location of the Red Funnel Car Ferry at Town Quay Terminal 1 and the Red Jet service at Town Quay Terminal 2. A major point of interest on the Isle of Wight is the Osborne House. The Osborne House is located about one mile from the East Coast Red Funnel Vehicle Ferry Terminal. Although it is possible to walk from the ferry terminal to Osborne House, we recommend taking a taxi. The fare is only about six British pounds. Osborne House is a former royal residence in East Coast. The house was built between 1845 and 1851 for Queen Victoria and Prince Albert as a summer home and rural retreat. Prince Albert designed the house himself in the style of an Italian Renaissance palazzo. The builder was Thomas Cubitt. The London architect and builder whose company built the main facade of Buckingham Palace for the royal couple in 1847. An earlier smaller house on the site was demolished to make way for this newer and far larger house. Queen Victoria died at Osborne House in January 1901. Following her death, the house became surplus to royal requirements and was given to the state with a few rooms retained as a private royal museum dedicated to Queen Victoria. From 1903 until 1921, Osborne House was used as a junior officer training college for the Royal Navy, known as the Royal Naval College Osborne. Today it is fully open to the public.
The New Forest National Park is just a short trip west and south from Southampton. There is Southampton and the New Forest National Park. The New Forest National Park is just a short distance south of Southampton. The New Forest National Park is much more than just a forest. Visitor attractions include wildlife and nature places to explore plus historic houses and museums to take you back in time to discover the history of the New Forest. The New Forest Tour Bus is a good way to see the forest during the summer months. There are three New Forest Tour. The Green Route, the Blue Route and the Red Route. Each route takes its own journey around the forest giving you the best opportunity to see and experience more. You can hop on and off at any one of the designated stops along the way and catch another bus later. Or switch between tours using the same ticket. Tours run daily between the 29th of June and the 15th of September. The Exbury Gardens were created by Lionel de Rothschild in the 1920s. They are a stunning vision of his inspiration. Offering 200 acres of natural beauty and horticultural variety. Uli is a small village in the New Forest National Park. It features the world-famous National Motor Museum, the Palace House home of the Montague family, and the Abbey Ruins, containing an exhibition of monastic life. The Bouli Palace House is a 13th century house originally built in the 13th century as the Great Gatehouse of Bouli Abbey. It has been the ancestral home of a branch of the Montague family since 1538, when it was bought from the crown following the dissolution of the monasteries by Henry VIII. The National Moto Museum, originally the Montague Moto Museum, is in the village of Bouli. It was founded in 1952 by Edward Douglas Scott Montague, the third Baron Montague of Bouli as a tribute to his father, who was one of the pioneers of motoring in the United Kingdom. The museum has around 250 vehicles on display. An interesting feature is a monorail passing through the interior of the building. Keeping in touch To keep in touch or surf the web there is free internet access available at the Southampton Central Public Library. Two hours of free internet time are available by registering at the desk. Here is the location of the library, together with the train station. A few blocks away from the train station is the Southampton Central Coach Station. The Southampton Central Public Library is located in the Southampton City Council Complex. Close by is the Southampton Visitor Information Bureau and the Sea City Museum. One good point of reference that can be seen from far away is the Southampton Guildhall Clock Tower. Money of the UK. Currency exchange rates can change daily. For the latest exchange rate click on this icon. 1 US dollar equals 0.83 GBP British pounds and 1 GBP equals 1 US dollar and 20 cents. There are many shopping opportunities in Southampton. The largest shopping center or mall in the center of the city is the West Quay Shopping Center. A major area for stores is along above Bar Street, London Road and Bedford Place. There's also an Asda store on Portland Terrace. Shown in the circle for reference are the library and the art gallery. Will it be hot? Or will it be cold in Southampton? Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Southampton. Southampton has a typical moderate maritime climate with no temperature extremes. During the summer months the midday highs are in the pleasant high 60s to low 70s. 
It does get a bit chilly at night. However, so taking a sweater or light jacket along is advisable. Hail the average high and low temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Southampton. Here is the average monthly rainfall in inches throughout the year in Southampton. We see that the rainiest months are the late autumn through midwinter months, October through February. Here is the average number of rainy days throughout the year in Southampton. Although the summer months experience substantially less rainfall than other times of the year, the chance of some rain is still high, with about half of the days having some rainfall. However, it is usually light. So, it's a good idea to be prepared. Check the weather forecast, and maybe take an umbrella along. Getting to Southampton Most travellers to the UK from overseas will arrive at or leave from the London Heathrow LHR airport. The most convenient and inexpensive way to get to or from Southampton is the National Express coaches which are fed direct transportation between the various terminals at the airport to the Southampton coach station. The trip takes 2 hours and costs 21 British pounds for adults and 16 British pounds for seniors. There are departures about every hour and a half. The train is also a possibility, but it is more expensive and there is no direct train, which can be difficult, especially when encumbered with luggage. It is also possible to take the National Express coaches between Gatwick Airport and Southampton. Many people overlook the fact that there is a major airport just 4 miles 6.5 kilometers from Southampton. It is the Southampton Airport, SOU. While not offering nearly as many international routes as Heathrow or Gatwick, there are flights to places like Spain, the Netherlands, France, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, and the UK. Recommended videos, Southampton. Recommended video, Welcome to Southampton, 5 minutes, 18 seconds. Recommended video, Things to do in Southampton, 11 minutes, 41 seconds. Recommended video, Student tour of Southampton, 5 minutes, 47 seconds. Recommended videos. Walking tours of Southampton. For a street level experience of Southampton, view the video walking tours. It's the next best thing to being there. Recommended video Southampton walking to playlist. Table of contents Southampton. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.